In the annals of history, tales of grand castles, valiant knights, and noble families have captivated our imagination when it comes to the medieval era. Yet, amidst the tapestries and heraldry, there lies a hidden chapter of society often overlooked, those lost youngsters who were left to fend for themselves. These young souls, deprived of parents and kin, led a vastly different existence, one fraught with hardship and resilience that shaped the course of their destinies. Within the stone walls of monasteries, the hustle of bustling marketplaces and the hushed whispers of village communities, orphans forged their own paths. They defied the odds, displaying a strength of character that echoed throughout the ages. While the secret life of orphans in medieval times may have faded into obscurity, their stories continue to echo through the corridors of time, awaiting rediscovery. Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the untold narratives of these forgotten children. So, what is this sad truth about these orphans during the medieval era? Let's have a look. Well, throughout the records of history, the prevalence of orphans in medieval society is a haunting reality that echoes through the ages. The tumultuous era of the Middle Ages, marked by frequent wars, devastating diseases, and pervasive poverty, created a fertile ground for the emergence of countless orphans. War, the relentless spectre of the medieval world, left countless children bereft of parents. The clash of armies on battlefields resulted in countless casualties, leaving behind a generation of orphans grappling with the loss of their loved ones. Historical records from the period recount heart-wrenching stories of children roaming the ravaged lands, their innocence shattered by the brutality of the conflict. Disease, another harrowing adversary, mercilessly claimed lives in medieval times. Plagues, such as the Black Death, which swept across Europe in the 14th century, caused widespread death and resulted in the loss of parents and guardians for many children. It, in fact, swept through cities and villages, decimating populations and leaving orphans in their wake. Survivors were left to grapple with the loss of their families, their lives forever marked by the indelible scars of epidemic tragedy. For your further information, a law that allowed for the sale of orphans into slavery was passed in England in 1388. This law was passed in response to the large number of orphans who were left homeless and destitute after the Black Death. The law allowed for the sale of orphans into slavery to anyone willing to pay for them. The price of an orphan varied depending on their age, health, and skill. Many orphans were sold into slavery to work in the fields, mines, or factories. Others were sold into domestic service or prostitution. Moreover, in 1484, Pope Innocent VIII issued a papal bull that allowed for the abandonment of unwanted children. This bull was issued in response to the high number of illegitimate children who were being born in Europe at that time. The bull allowed the parents of illegitimate children to abandon them at any church or hospital. The children who were abandoned were often left to die in the streets, and later, in the 17th century, the English Civil War led to the widespread abandonment of children. Many orphans were left to fend for themselves, and many more died of starvation or disease. Anyway, poverty was another major contributor to the prevalence of orphans in medieval society. In an era defined by feudalism and an agrarian economy, many families lived in extreme poverty. Parents often succumbed to disease or malnutrition, unable to provide for their children's basic needs. In some cases, families were forced to abandon their children due to extreme destitution, unable to offer even the bare essentials of life. These impoverished children were left to fend for themselves, facing heightened vulnerability in the absence of family care. The challenges faced by orphans were immense. They were thrust into a world where food and shelter were scarce, and the absence of parental guidance left them exposed to exploitation and abuse. Historical accounts document the desperate measures these children resorted to, engaging in menial labor, begging, and sometimes turning to crime to survive. Their vulnerable position was further heightened by the lack of social support structures. While some fortunate few found refuge within monasteries and convents, many others were left to navigate the treacherous path alone. The harsh realities of life forced these young souls to mature prematurely, robbed of their innocence, and forced to adapt to a world that offered little compassion. So what kind of harrowing emotional damage did these orphans face? 
Can you imagine growing up without the nurturing care and support of your parents? Well, the emotional and psychological toll on orphans in medieval times was immense. Growing up without the love, guidance, and nurturing care of parents left deep scars on their fragile souls. They experienced a profound sense of abandonment and isolation that often haunted them throughout their lives. Let us add further to your awe here. Orphans in the medieval era were also often subjected to idiot cages. Metal cages that were used to publicly display people who were considered to be mentally ill or intellectually disabled. They were often placed in public squares or markets where people could come to gawk at them. Orphans were often considered to be a burden on society. So, idiot cages were a way of isolating and dehumanizing these orphans, making it difficult for them to be integrated into society. Moreover, a ship of fools, a concept that originated in medieval literature and art, was also considered the right place for the orphans. Historically, there were instances where individuals with disabilities, especially those deemed unproductive or burdensome, were forcibly relocated to other lands. Some communities would pay sailors to transport these individuals away, relieving themselves of the perceived burden. However, without the support systems that intact families provided, orphans faced significant challenges in developing healthy emotional connections. The absence of a stable and loving environment deprived them of the nurturing experiences necessary for healthy emotional development. Orphans often lack the emotional support necessary to navigate the complexities of their circumstances. They endured feelings of loneliness, sadness, and anxiety, compounded by the constant uncertainty of their lives. Their longing for love and belonging went unanswered, leaving them emotionally scarred and vulnerable. So, how difficult was it for orphans to get basic necessities on the streets? Well, during these testing times, even basic needs became a luxury for orphans, perpetuating a cycle of poverty and deprivation from which escape seemed nearly impossible. The dire circumstances they faced, often characterized by extreme poverty and destitution, drove some families to make heartbreaking choices, including the tragic act of infanticide. Poverty and destitution were endemic in medieval times, with vast segments of the population struggling to secure their basic needs. For families already burdened by scarcity, the arrival of a new mouth to feed often pushed them to the brink of desperation. Unable to provide for their children, some parents resorted to the unimaginable choice of infanticide, driven by the belief that sparing their offspring from a life of suffering was in fact an act of mercy. For those orphans who managed to survive, their daily lives were marked by a lack of proper nutrition and hygiene. Historical records reveal a stark reality of malnutrition and unsanitary living conditions. Scarce access to nourishing food hindered their growth and development, rendering them physically and mentally vulnerable. The absence of proper sanitation and clean water further compounded their hardships, leaving them susceptible to diseases that thrived in unhygienic environments. The dire living conditions in which these orphans often found themselves are evident in historical accounts. Overcrowded and dilapidated living quarters, makeshift shelters, or even the streets became their harsh reality. They endured the bitter cold without adequate clothing or shelter. They were exposed to the elements and were deprived of warmth and comfort. Moving on to their life of labor, how harsh were these working conditions? So. When no one stood up for their rights, orphans became easy targets for exploitation and forced labor. And these innocent souls were coerced into dangerous or arduous work without any protection or rights. The vulnerability of orphans in medieval times made them easy targets for exploitation and forced labor. In a society where the strong preyed upon the weak, these innocent souls had little chance to defend themselves or assert their rights. Without familial or societal protection, they were subjected to inhumane working conditions and forced into labor at an early age. Orphans were often forced into arduous or dangerous work to support themselves or benefit their exploiters. They became cheap labor, easily exploitable due to their desperate circumstances. These children could be found toiling away in mines, working in fields, or performing other physically demanding tasks that should have been reserved for adults. Without legal safeguards or rights, orphans were at the mercy of those who exploited them. Their lack of agency and protection made it nearly impossible to escape their exploitative situations, like physical punishment, casting a dark shadow over the lives of these vulnerable children. Orphans often bore the brunt of beatings, floggings, and even more severe forms of corporal punishment. These acts were employed to instill fear and maintain control. Dangerous work conditions were also an unfortunate reality for these young souls. Orphans were often thrust into physically demanding and hazardous jobs, toiling in mines, factories, or serving as apprentices to craftsmen. 
Unprotected, they faced perils such as hazardous substances, heavy machinery, and unsafe working environments. Tragically, accidents and injuries were all too common. Emotional torment was brutal and took its toll on these already burdened souls. Orphans were subjected to constant verbal humiliation, demeaning treatment, psychological manipulation, and even sexual exploitation at the hands of their employers. This calculated abuse aimed to crush as well as traumatize their spirits and maintain control, further entrenching their struggle to escape their exploitative circumstances. Moreover, forced labor and bondage perpetuated a vicious cycle for these orphans. Many found themselves trapped as indentured servants or slaves, stripped of autonomy and freedom. Bound to their employers, escape from their exploitative predicaments remained a distant dream, perpetuating their suffering. Let's go to the suppressed horizons and a cognitive void. Well, education is often seen as a pathway to a brighter future. However, for orphans in medieval times, access to education was a distant dream. As in, without the financial means to access formal schooling or the support of a family to guide their learning, these young souls faced a cognitive void and suppressed horizons. Orphans, in fact, lacked the opportunity for the personal growth and development that education provided. Without the ability to read, write, or acquire knowledge, their intellectual potential remained untapped. They were denied the chance to expand their horizons, pursue their interests, and gain the skills necessary for social and economic advancement. The absence of education had a profound impact on the future prospects and social mobility of these children. Denied the chance to acquire knowledge and develop valuable skills, their opportunities for employment were severely limited. Without the means to secure stable, well-paying jobs, they remain trapped in a cycle of poverty and marginalization. Here, we must not forget the sickening abuse of these poor souls that was taken much too far. The vulnerability of orphans in medieval times extended to the realm of sexual exploitation. Their lack of protection and support made them easy targets for those seeking to exploit their innocence. Without proper safeguards and oversight, these vulnerable souls were subjected to unimaginable abuses. The power imbalance between the exploiters and the orphans allowed these heinous crimes to go overlooked. Predators took advantage of their vulnerability, using coercion, manipulation, and force to control their victims. The lack of a support system or an effective legal framework meant that many of these crimes went unreported and unpunished. The absence of safeguards and oversight meant that the voices of orphans were silenced. Their suffering and exploitation remained hidden from the public eye, perpetuating a culture of impunity for the perpetrators. The power dynamics at play enabled these crimes to persist, leaving orphans without the protection they so desperately needed. However, besides this kind of mistreatment on the whole, there were certain nurturing safety nets and humanitarian endeavors as well. Like, religious institutions played a significant role in providing some support for orphans in medieval times. Foundling wheels, where infants could be left anonymously, were established as a means of providing safety for abandoned children. Charitable individuals or organizations also made efforts to alleviate the suffering of orphans through donations or the establishment of orphanages. While these support networks provide a glimmer of hope, they also had limitations and shortcomings. The resources available were often insufficient to meet the overwhelming need, resulting in overcrowded and understaffed institutions. The quality of care varied greatly, with some orphanages falling short of providing the nurturing environment these children needed desperately. Tragically, there was a darker side to some of these facilities too. Neglect, abuse, sexual harassment, human trafficking, medical experiments, and even hidden burials have all been uncovered in some historical accounts. The very institutions that were meant to protect and support these orphans became the backdrop to further suffering and exploitation. So, the mistreatment of orphans in medieval times cast a long shadow on their lives and our understanding of history. The physical, emotional, and psychological scars they endured serve as a poignant reminder of the vulnerabilities faced by children in any era. Their stories call upon us to reflect on the lessons we can learn from the past to ensure a brighter future for all. By examining the struggles faced by orphans in medieval times, we are reminded of the importance of providing support, protection, and care for vulnerable children in our own societies. It is our responsibility to create a nurturing environment to grow, develop, and thrive. As we navigate the complexities of our modern world, let us learn from history and work towards a society where no child is abandoned, neglected, or denied their basic rights. Together, we can build a future that ensures the well-being and future prospects of every child, leaving no room for the not-so-secret life of orphans to be repeated. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching Unthinkable Past. 
and we'll see you in the next one.